Before we start this video, I just wanted to mention that 87.6% of you who watch this channel aren't yet subscribed, so if you enjoy the content, please hit the subscribe button. Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing, once again, Lord Voldemort. You may also know him as the Dark Lord, he who must not be named, the heir of Slytherin, or you know who. Voldemort is the perfect antagonist for the Harry Potter films, and his character is the manifestation of all that is wrong in the world. A dark and twisted man, not sure you can still say that after all the dark magic he's done, that wants nothing but power. He is devoid of emotion, unable to feel empathy for anyone, even his closest companions, and will stop at nothing in his rise to power. Over the course of the books and films, we see Voldemort's character development grow and grow, and where he starts off as just a name, he slowly becomes the dark and evil wizard, played by Ralph Fiennes, that we see on screen. After a devastating loss to the Potters, Voldemort found himself without a physical form, and over the course of the earlier films, finds himself piecing his body back together. But what a lot of people don't know, or simply haven't noticed, is that Voldemort wasn't always portrayed by Ralph Fiennes in the films. In fact, Fiennes wasn't in the film adaptations of Harry Potter at all until The Goblet of Fire four years after the first film came out. This poses the question, who played Voldemort before him? Voldemort was in the films before then, wasn't he? Voldemort's character is so important, and casting for him must have been supremely difficult. They would need to effectively portray his sociopathic tendencies with an element of charm. We first see Voldemort in the Philosopher's Stone. We're brought back to the year 1981, where a cloaked figure is entering the gate of the Potter residence in Godric's Hollow. Then, later on in the same film, we're shown a horrible cloaked figure, feasting on unicorn blood in the Forbidden Forest. And finally, towards the end of the film, we see a face. A face that just so happened to be on the back of Professor Quirrell's head. Harry Potter, we meet again, he uttered as Quirrell unravels his turban. This face of course belongs to the very first Voldemort, Richard Bremer. Bremer was responsible for acting out the beginning scene at Godric's Hollow, as well as, obviously, the scene where his face was exposed. Bremer is a British actor from Warwickshire, England, and had a long acting resume before taking on the role of Voldemort. While Bremer did an amazing job with his limited exposure in the role, he was eventually replaced by actor Ralph Fiennes. Even though Bremer did a great job, when the time came for Voldemort to make a resurgence in the Goblet of Fire, Warner Brothers opted for a more famous actor. Fiennes, who replaced Bremer, was widely recognized at this time and had an Oscar nomination under his belt. Harry Potter had grown a lot since Bremer played the role and it just made sense. Bremer was an exceptionally good sport about being replaced and had this to say. The producer spent a long time fighting to get me, so I'm very proud to have been the first. But the role is now being played by Ralph Fiennes, who is an old mate in the fourth film. I've been in the business a long time and it didn't surprise me that they just went for a bigger name, being Hollywood led, and I'm happy to pass it on to Ralph. The next version of Voldemort that we see on screen is in the Chamber of Secrets, where we see Christian Coulson playing a 16-year-old Tom Riddle. Coulson is a British actor who was born in Manchester, England, and had a fair bit of acting experience under his belt before taking on the role. Unlike Bremer, Coulson had the honour of having more of a physical presence on screen, complete with his own body. Coulson played the role of Voldemort in the past, a younger version of himself and so for this reason it was necessary that they bring in another actor. Bremer was simply too old to play the role of young Tom Riddle, and so Coulson was cast. Coulson was 23 himself, but was convincing enough. The next version of Voldemort that we see on screen belongs to none other than Ralph Fiennes, who assumes the role of the present timeline Voldemort that we all know and love. Interestingly enough, Fiennes was actually reluctant to take on the role at first and said the following in an interview. The truth is, I was actually ignorant about the films and the books. I was approached by the production. Mike Newell was directing the film that they wanted me to be in, the first time Voldemort was going to appear physically. Out of ignorance, I just sort of thought, this isn't for me. Quite stupidly, I resisted. I was hesitant. I think the clincher was that my sister Martha, who has three children who were then probably about 12, 10 and 8, she said, 
What do you mean? You've got to do it. So then I rewound my thinking. Fortunately for all of us, Fine's sister Martha knocked some sense into him. His performance of Voldemort from the Half-Blood Prince onward was spectacular, and it's obvious that he really put his heart and soul into the role. He made it entirely his own, and for good reason, Fines is the definitive image of Voldemort in most fans' minds. Next up came hero Fines Tiffin, who played the 11-year-old version of Voldemort at Wall's Orphanage in London, the orphanage where he was left by his mother, Merope Gaunt. Tiffin was an important part of the Half-Blood Prince film adaptation, as he gave us all a glimpse of what the Dark Lord was like as a child. Fines Tiffin, as you might be able to guess by the name, is related to actor Ralph Fiennes. He's his nephew. Tiffin does an exceptional job at portraying the young wizard and nails the creepy but innocent representation of Voldemort the filmmakers were going for. This was a boy who knew that he was different but didn't yet know what he was and what he was destined to be. At the same time as Tiffin, Frank Delaney was cast in the role of Voldemort, or at least a young Tom Riddle. Delaney was an integral part of the film as he was the representative for Riddle's character in the flashbacks of him at age 16. By the time the half blood Prince came out, Corson would have been just a little bit too old to play a 16-year-old again, which is why I expect they cast Delaney. While Delaney was good, I do think that Corson was a bit better. Corson was more dynamic in that he was able to more convincingly play both sides of Voldemort's character. He could convincingly portray the good nature of Voldemort while the teachers were around, but also had no difficulty playing the more evil side of him. Delaney was just sort of a bit creepy all of the time. And that concludes the list of the five actors that played Voldemort. The present timeline Voldemort was showcased by Bremer and later Fiennes, the 16-year-old Voldemort was showcased by Coulson and later Delaney, and the 11-year-old Voldemort was showcased by Tiffin. And that's it for this video. Let me know who your favourites were and why. Also, what do you guys think of the new background music? Until next time, you're Wizard Harry!